prepare the right soil for your plants, come to Merrifield Garden Center. We know plants. Good morning, America. Breaking news about the royal wedding. The palace just reveals Prince Charles will walk Meghan Markle down the aisle to marry his son, Prince Harry, after Meghan confirmed her own father won't be there. The ceremony, now less than 24 hours away, new images show the happy couple leaving for rehearsals, Will and Kate right behind them, as Meghan prepares to make history, and millions around the world prepare to welcome an American princess. Also breaking news, shots fired at the Trump Resort near Miami. A gunman walking into the lobby with an American flag draped over his shoulders, yelling about the president, police opening fire. President Trump's extraordinary appeal, his message to Kim Jong-un offering to protect his regime after North Korea threatens to pull out of the nuclear summit. And we're live in Windsor for the wedding of a lifetime. New details just in about the ceremony, the dress, and the reception. The event millions around the world will watch. We're live where it's all happening right here on GMA. Good morning, America. Hit it. This is a special edition of Good Morning America Live from Times Square and Windsor Castle with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. Happy Friday. It certainly is a happy one in Great Britain, as you see Amy and I holding on the fort here in New York. That's right, and Robin and Michael are there in Windsor. Another beautiful day, and Robin, you made it. <laughs> Just got here moments ago, Amy. Um, my fascinator didn't make it through customs, but I'm assured that it will be here by the 8 o'clock hour. And Michael, you've been here, and you, you can already feel the excitement. I'm more excited because you're here now. I've been waiting on you the whole time, but you can feel the excitement. Mm. Yesterday, I had a chance to walk along the long walk, which mm. you can see behind us, meet a lot of the locals, learn some terminology, Ooh. and on top of that, I got a little carriage ride. So it made me feel special uh -huh. here in England. I You're going to share that. all that with us I'm a little bit? I'm going to share it all with everybody. Okay. Harry and Meghan, as we know, are going to tie the knot tomorrow morning at St. George's Chapel here on the grounds of Windsor Castle. You can see it there. They will travel through Windsor in a carriage after the ceremony. And so we want you to take a look at the route that they will take before returning to the castle where they will have a reception. It'll come right by here. In line right by, by, by 100,000 or more people <laughs> out here filling, filling up each side of the road. But we have team coverage here in Windsor. All are standing by with the final preparations before all the pomp and circumstance of tomorrow. Let's start with our Paula Ferris, who's at the Heart and Garter Hotel. And Paula, we've just learned Prince Charles will walk Meghan down the aisle. Yes, and this announcement is widely being celebrated this morning throughout Britain. What a special moment it's going to be for Prince Charles. No daughters of his own to walk down the aisle, and now he'll be walking down his future daughter-in-law. This morning, Kensington Palace announcing that Meghan Markle, seen here with Prince Harry leaving a dress rehearsal at Windsor Castle, has asked Prince Charles, her future father-in-law, to accompany her down the aisle. The palace saying in a statement, the Prince of Wales is pleased to be able to welcome Ms. Markle to the royal family in this way. This announcement putting to rest weeks of speculation about who would walk the 36-year-old down the aisle. Markle's father, Thomas, who was believed to be her first choice, appeared to change his mind about attending the wedding several times, following the news that he was cooperating with the paparazzi for this series of pictures, and then admitted to suffering heart trouble, which landed him in the hospital near his home in Mexico this week. Meghan announcing yesterday that regretfully, he will not be able to attend the wedding. So that leaves mom Doria as the only member of Markle's family who will be in St. George's Chapel for the ceremony. The yoga instructor and social worker arriving in London yesterday, where she was whisked from Heathrow Airport to Windsor Castle to meet Prince Charles and Camilla for tea. The first meeting between the three was described by witnesses as jolly. And this morning, Doria will be meeting the Queen for the first time. Then she will be celebrating Meghan's last night as a single woman with her at the Cliveden House Hotel. Meantime, Prince William and Harry will be staying across town at the Coworth Park, a five-star country house. 
And we've also learned that Prince Philip, Harry's 96-year-old grandfather, who's recovering from hip replacement surgery, will be attending the ceremony. And Robin and Michael, if you remember back in December, Harry said something along the lines of, my family is the family that Meghan never really had. Those words are so poignant in light of everything that has transpired. Good point. Very good point. Thank you so much for that, Paula. Joining us now is our royal contributor, Imogen Lloyd Webber. And Imogen, mm -hmm. we just learned this morning, Prince yeah. Charles is going to walk Megan down the mm -hmm. aisle. And she asked him to do this herself, which is a, a big step, I could imagine, for her. But not only that, a, a, the future king of England is going to walk a biracial divorcee down the aisle in front of the world. How significant is that? It's symbolic. Obviously, the royal family have evolved. The last Prince of Wales, we also now know, is the Duke of Windsor. And, of course, he wanted to marry Wallace Simpson, a divorced American, and wasn't mm. allowed. So, obviously, the royal family has moved on. But this is also personal for Prince Charles. He longed for a daughter. Diana talked about that. And in 2015, he even admitted publicly that he wanted his second grandchild to be a girl. And, of course, his wish came true. So, it's Princess Charlotte. So, he does have that moment of walking his future daughter and all down the aisle. That's a big moment for a father and a... Yes, yeah. exactly. We've been told that they have a special relationship. This mm -hmm. is really proof of that. It is, absolutely. And everyone's talking about how Meghan is a humanitarian activist. Prince Charles has been for decades. The work his Princess Trust has done for 42 years really has been on hot-button issues. He sometimes got in trouble over it. So I imagine they're bonding over that. Mm -hmm. you know, kindred spirits, yeah. as it were. But this is not the first time he's walked someone down the aisle. You're absolutely right there. He actually walked um, Diana's goddaughter down oh, the aisle, right. Alexandra Natchville, in 2016. So he has a bit of practice, because this is a high-pressure <laughs> moment right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, we, we, this, uh, but we're also learning that um, Prince Philip is going to attend. We haven't seen him in a while. Which is great news. He did have hip operation um, fairly recently. He's 96 years old, soon to be 97. He's a very proud man. Anyone who's watched The Crown knows yeah, this. Right, right. So he wouldn't want to be seen in public unless he was absolutely sure that he was nailing it, as it were. So wonderful news for everybody, especially the Queen, to have her husband yes, there. exactly. And this really speaks about the royal family, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the way that, you know, Prince Charles has accepted this invitation. Uh, I mean... To enter into this royal family as she has, she couldn't be welcomed any more than this gesture by him. Very important, the royal family have always said, to learn the lessons of the past. That's how they survived. They learned the lessons from Diana's death. They've obviously had a bit of a rocky week, but they're also learning from that. And they're yeah. stepping up, and they're looking after her, and that's so important. You know, every bride gets nervous before her big day. She's got all the pressure of the world. This is a great big goldfish bowl, and she's just going to be beautiful and wonderful, and it's wonderful that Prince Charles is doing this. I know. But as you said, it's a great way to be welcomed to sure. the family, mm. even though we know she's going to miss her father. Absolutely. Yeah. It's Happy in the spotlight, and there's so many people and going to be here and there's great concern, as we can understand. And there are going to be 600 people that are going to be inside the chapel for the actual service, but there are going to be just hundreds of thousands that are going to be out here. And so security is of the utmost importance. It's tight all around, and our James Longman has more on that story for us. James? Good morning, Robin. Security is extremely tight, making sure to keep the 100,000 expected to gather here safe. Now take a look behind me. Heavily armed police. We've really seen their presence step up just today, in fact. There's already airport-style security and sniffer dogs on the outskirts of town preparing a so-called ring of steel. And authorities tell visitors expect to see all kinds of police here, on horseback, on the river, and in the air. There's even a 48-hour no-fly zone over the castle. And all this will cost. The wedding itself is going to be paid for by the royal family. But security is a public affair. At Will and Kate's wedding in 2011, the government paid nearly $9 million to keep everyone safe. And while there's no specific security threat, Britain does remain on its second highest level of alert, severe. Robin? All right, James, thank you so much. So taking every precaution, yeah. as you would imagine. So we're going to have much more from Windsor coming up, but back to you all there in New York. Amy? All right, thanks so much, guys. And we're going to turn now to that breaking news overnight. A suspect walking into the Trump Doral Resort near Miami with a gun in his hand. Police there opening fire, taking him into custody. ABC's Victor Okendo is on the scene there with the very latest on all of those new developments. Good morning, Victor.
Good morning, Amy. It is still an active scene here behind me. The calls to police came in around 1.30 in the morning, and when they arrived, they say this gunman was already firing shots inside the lobby of the Trump National Doral, this upscale hotel, which is owned by the president. There's no word on a motive just yet, but police say that this individual was yelling about President Trump, that he came in with an American flag, and he draped it over the counter. He was also trying to lure officers inside the lobby. This all happened very quickly, just a matter of minutes. A Miami-Dade police officer officer and a city of Doral police officer were the first to arrive. They did not hesitate, according to police, immediately engaging the shooter who had a handgun. They exchanged gunfire, hitting that gunman several times in the lower extremities. He's been transported to the hospital. Should mention one officer was injured, but not from a gunshot, possibly suffering a broken wrist. Incredibly, nobody else was injured here. Now we've got multiple agencies on the ground investigating, including the Secret Service. They're working to determine if this individual had any kind Kind of relationship with President Trump. They'll be out here investigating all day. Amy? All right, certainly a frightening scene there. Thank you so much, Victor. George? It was a scary situation. We go to the White House now in the latest in the summer with North Korea. President Trump now taking steps to reassure Kim Jong-un after that threat from North Korea to cancel the historic meeting. Our senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega has the details. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. These insults of the past, little rocket man, fire and fury, we are not hearing that anymore from President Trump. Now he is offering Kim Jong-un protections. From the Oval Office, President Trump enticing Kim Jong-un to talks by offering him a lifeline. He'll get protections that will be very strong. If we make a deal, I think Kim Jong-un is going to be very, very happy. The president seemed to pledge Kim would remain in power if there's a deal. This would be with Kim Jong-un, something where he'd be there, he'd be in his country, he'd be running his country. His country would be very rich. But the North Koreans this week signaled they could be getting cold feet, warning they might not attend a meeting with President Trump after National Security Advisor John Bolton urged them to do what Libya did more than a decade ago. We have very much in mind the Libya model from 2003-2004. To North Korea, that sounds like regime change. After Libya gave up its nuclear program, dictator Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown and murdered in the streets. With Bolton right there looking on, President Trump flatly contradicted him. Well, the Libyan model isn't a model that we have at all when we're thinking of North Korea. In Libya, we decimated that country. But the president ever optimistic the summit is still on as the White House continues to make plans for Singapore. Nothing has changed on North Korea that we know of. Uh, we have not been uh, told anything. And if it does, uh, that's fine. If it doesn't, I think we'll probably have a very successful meeting. Now, that reaction from the president there is exactly what we're hearing unanimously from the State Department, from other White House officials, from the National Security Council. George, they all say despite North Korea's threats to pull out of this meeting, they are all still planning and moving ahead as if this is going to happen. Yeah, I want to keep everything on track. Meantime, on the home front, Cecilia, a major move from the White House today taking on Planned Parenthood. Yeah, George, we are told this morning from a White House official that this announcement will happen today. Essentially, this requires abortion services to be offered in a space separate from where other family planning activities are happening. Abortion rights group are calling this a gag order, saying it essentially blocks them from providing uh, abortion information and services, uh, and, and will they will lose their family planning funding. Uh, this is aimed, as you said, at Planned Parenthood, George, but anti-abortion groups are really cheering this one this morning. Could affect more than $200 million in funding. Cecilia? Thanks very much, Amy. Well, George, now to new concerns about that volcano emergency in Hawaii, an eruption sending an ash cloud 30,000 feet in the air, and officials are now handing out 18,000 ash masks to residents still on Hawaii's Big Island. ABC's Matt Gutman has been there throughout it all. Matt, good morning, and what a stunning scene there behind you. It is. I want to give you a sense of where it is, Amy. Good morning, by the way. Uh, this was a cow pasture. That is now Fisher 20. You can see it gurgling and bubbling that lava dozens of feet in the air. And what's incredible is that we're actually seeing molten rock ooze down the hill. That rock is a 1100 degrees. You can see it also bursting over there at another fissure. And just beyond that stand of trees, uh, you can see them smoking. They've just been lit on fire. Now, seismologists were out here this morning. They're assessing this because another fissure has opened up. And these fissures that had cooled had actually become active again. They're trying to figure out why that is. The only thing they know for sure is that 
Well, you can see that eruption there. It, it, the only thing they know for sure is that we're going to see more of these eruptions. Now, the concern is that that is going to cause this massive haze of sulfur dioxide all across this island, which is why, as you mentioned, these respirators are the most sought after and scarce commodity around. Civil Defense handing out 18,000 of them because people are so concerned about their health here. I Andy. mean, we, we can hear that behind you. You're safe where you are right now, Matt. Yeah. We are safe okay. where we are. We're a safe distance away, but it is, you know, just enormous amount of lava being spewed into the air here. Wow. Very impressive. All right, Matt Gutman, indeed impressive. Boy, and Matt staying cool Thanks, through Andy. all yes. that as well. We're going to get the latest now on that tragic school bus accident in New Jersey where a bus full of fifth graders on a field trip hit a dump truck, tipped over, killing at least two people. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the story. A fun student excursion turning instead to tragedy. Their school bus ripped apart in a deadly crash. I'm going to need about 20 ambulances. I have a full school bus and I have victims on the ground. Investigators say it appears the bus filled with 38 fifth graders and seven adults on a field trip was traveling on southbound US 206 when it turned onto westbound Interstate 80, colliding with that dump truck in Mount Olive, New Jersey at 1030 Thursday morning. You could hear the tire screeching and then you heard it. Uh, you could you actually hear the bus hitting the guardrail. Be advised, we have two young females who are in progress. I got one child shallow breathing with a head injury. The highway littered with wreckage. You can see the steering wheel. The front end of the bus sheared off. The crash ripping the chassis right off the body of the bus. Police using dogs to search the scene in nearby woods for survivors. The dump truck several hundred yards down from the crash scene. One student and one adult were killed. The injured, several in critical condition, rushed to area hospitals. For those of you that have the loved ones, you go home. And you say how much you love them because there are people that tonight are not able to. And we do know the driver of that dump truck has been speaking to investigators. The school has canceled all field trips for the remainder of the year. Just a heartbreaking sound. Yeah. Incredible images there. All right, Eva, thank you so much. And now to all that rain and flooding that just won't let up this morning. Frederick, Maryland, one of the many spots on the East Coast underwater. ABC's David Curley is there with all the latest. Good morning, David. Morning, Amy. More rain is coming. That is the bank of the river down there. We are actually up beyond that, and you can see the floodwaters streaming down this river. Already 9 to 10 inches here in Frederick. More is coming. Could be a foot of rain by the time this is over. The flood alert stands for another 24 hours. Firefighters have been very busy. Nearly 500 calls. More than 100 of them rescues. A lot of folks stranded in their cars when they got caught in all this rain and water, and it is coming your way. Amy. All right, David, a busy day for emergency workers there. Thank you. Actually, you're heading that way, I, I right, right into way. the rain. <laughs> Want to go back over to Windsor. Michael and Robin are there. And, and Mike, you got the cake? <laughs> That's right, George. We're getting a close up of the cake. Kensington Palace giving us our first glimpse of the royal wedding Ooh. cake. It's, it's a three part layered lemon and elderflower cake made of 200 lemons, 500 organic eggs, and 44 pounds each of butter, flour, Ooh. and sugar. Sounds like something my mother cooked. <laughs> it was created by baker Claire Patak and six other bakers also. They've been working on it for the past five days in the kitchens of Buckingham Palace. And um, that's, that's going to be some thick, delicious, mm -hmm. much deserved cake after uh, a Certainly great ceremony. Be. And we're going to go back to you guys in New York. We'll save you a piece. Well, yeah, we, you. we were just saying how we'd like to have some it right looks now. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Ginger, yeah. what do you got on the flooding? Yes, so it is moving north. David said it exactly right, and it gives you a little idea of what's going to come. Three to four extra inches. We put on here the water vapor satellite again, so you can see the plumes of moisture coming up to the mid-Atlantic and northeast as we go through the weekend. From Asheville through Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, right through Philadelphia, and really Lancaster, Pennsylvania, you've all got that flood watch on through not just tonight, but some places through early tomorrow as that warm front lifts. Places like um, just east of Raleigh going to pick up three to four. All right, let's get the weekend getaways now brought to you by CarMax. You can now reserve a car online and CarMax will hold it for you up to seven days for free. You come in when it's convenient. I know this because I'm from seven days in the future. Now don't be frightened. Seven days in the future is a glorious place. After all, you had two good hair days in a row. Perfect. Right out of bed. And this car you reserved at CarMax.com is still being held for you for free. Pretty sweet. Or as we like to say from seven days in the future, we still say pretty sweet. It's basically the same. 
Flood concerns through the weekend as we pick up another one to two inches today and more through about noon Saturday when the rain is finally going to start easing. Temperatures today will stay on the cooler side again from 65 at lunchtime to 68 by 4 o'clock. Expect some heavier rain to move back in also during the overnight period and continue through the weekend with a 30% chance of seeing maybe a shower or thunderstorm on Sunday. We'll get up to 86 Sunday unsettled through about the mid part of next week. Coming up next, we have a lot more on the royal wedding. Meghan's road to royalty, how the American princess is breaking the mold, changing the face of the monarchy, and inspiring young girls everywhere when we come back. Hi, I'm Bob Harper, and I recently had a heart attack. It changed my life.